Hi, hi, this is Baby. I'm here with my dog Ruby. We're back with Hustle Cat. Um, things are going good. Not really much of an update. Ruby got a little bit of a boo boo, but she's doing okay. She's healing up real nice. Oh, bub. She's asleep on my feet. Well, actually, more accurately, she's ignoring me on my feet. Aren't you? If my voice sounds a little bit different, it's because I'm wearing my retainer, so don't ask me why. I decided to record with my retainer in, but I'm doing it, so here we go. Um, We say, I think I feel comfortable enough with my um, magic, I guess I might as well call it, to bring it up to everybody. I can demonstrate it now, after all, so it's not like they have no, they have a reason to not believe me. The real problem now is figuring out how the heck to bring it up. I'm going to mull that one over a bit, but I suppose a day or two more of planning won't hurt. I should start getting ready for work. I had a couple days off, but I've still been going in to hang out with everybody almost every day. What can I say? I really like everybody there. Some more than others. Hint. Okay, one especially more than others, but whatever. But again, first things first, we'll worry about the cat situation, and then I'll worry about the cute co-worker situation. I grab my keys, smoosh my face into Mochi's to say goodbye. He hates it. And then I head on my way. I do that to Ruby, too. I want to give her kisses. And she hates it. She does not want to be loved, but I can't help it. It's like she, um, the way I express this to people is, yes, <laughs> she does hate it when I kiss her face. However... She agrees to it in exchange for for shelter and food and safety and medical care. So it's a fair exchange. Cat meows. It's that rusty ass bike. I haven't seen any trace of that creepy guy since I saw him a while back. So I've started trying that other route to and from work when I need a change of scenery. It's not a great change, to be honest. There's still a lot of rusty junk lining the road. And it feels like I see more every time I come down this way. It's so deliberately placed that there's no way it isn't on purpose. There's a stack of old car parts that almost looks like a tower if you look at it the right way. It's almost artful. Today, though, there's a different addition to the walkway. Graves? He's right there, very much human, standing over the rusty, decrepit bike. He's so lost in thought, I wonder if he even notices I'm here. Graves? What's up? Oh, oh, Avery, just assessing the litter around the cafe. Yeah, it looks like someone's just been using this walkway as a trash dump. He says, so they have. We say, do you think it's one of the shop owners around here? Graves says, I know, I know the culprit. The true matter is to properly deal with its disposal. That's not our job. If you know who it is, make them do it, we say. Regretfully, I do not believe we can stop him. He looks so serious. I mean, I can't blame him. This is an eyesore, and it's probably hurting business. What a jerk! We say, who is it? Nobody you know. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's my go-to phrase if I don't want to answer a question. It's just, don't worry about it. <laughs> we say, well, I guess if he's not going to stop, we should just start cleaning it up. I'll help carry some of it. I roll up my hoodie sleeves and reach out to grab the rusty bike handle. Graves' his hand. <laughs> His fingers coiled tightly around my wrist. So quickly I didn't even see him move. Maybe that's his superpower. Don't touch it! His eyes hold an intense, stern glow as his stare bores into me. For just a moment I feel that chill claw up my spine again. Okay, sorry. Forgive me. It's too dangerous to do this without the correct procedure. You haven't learned enough yet. Is it because I don't have my tetanus shots? This is a lot more complicated than just picking up trash, huh, we say. Please don't worry about it. <laughs> so you say. I can't help but wonder if this is related to some other weird things I've seen around here, you know, we say. Graves says, I'd rather you just focus on the cafe and leave this to me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we say, you're so opaque, I seriously don't get you at all. Graves says, I've been hearing that since before I could speak. I'm used to it by now. <laughs> Who tells a baby I don't understand you? We say, I wish you'd just tell me straight up what's going on. Graves says, consider it a management problem. How's the job treating you? You do enjoy it here, yes? Well, maybe if I had a boss that told the truth, it'd be easier. Avery is so vicious. 
they do not hold back. I appreciate that about this protagonist. Like, other ones are kind of, you know, they kind of go with the flow, or maybe they're kind of just, like, ditzy, but, like, Avery calls it like it is. <laughs> they have no fear. Graves says, no need to be contentious. I'm doing the best I can. I truly am sorry for the mess, Avery. That's not my problem. My problem is the lying. We say, I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. Talk to the rest of the staff about that. Grave, ow, I just hit my headphones, sorry. Um, Grave says, best case scenario, this will be dealt with soon and we can all forget about it. We say, as if the best case, and if the best case doesn't happen, then we'll have a new bridge to cross, he says. Well, you best head in. Wouldn't want to be late, after all. I had a dumb pun in my head that was like, cross upside down cross because he's goth but i couldn't figure it out beyond that so put it together yourself um we say you gonna write me up or something if i am grave says i don't think i need to after finley got through with you for making her open by herself shoot you're right well later till then there isn't much time until we open so i hurry off to the cafe we book it and we made it Avery, there you are. It's Finley. I was starting to get worried. Um, I read out their names now when people speak, just for one, because it, it makes it flow better for me mentally, but also, like, I like to watch these Let's Plays while I'm, like, um, not mine, but, like, other people's when I'm doing other stuff. So, um, for people who are listening and not actually watching the screen, I hope that it helps them keep track of what's going on or you know for that matter if you're visually impaired um in some way so uh anyway i hope it's not too annoying but it's something that i picked up after i was like re-watching and editing some older videos and i was like dang it's really hard to keep track of who's talking so we say sorry i got sidetracked on the way here i ran into graves she says, I guess talking to the boss counts as work. Ha ha. <laughs> Here comes Reese being a fucking narc. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Graves couldn't hold it, keep hold of a topic if it was stapled to his hand. We hurriedly get to work finishing pre-open setup. Though it doesn't really matter because it's a slow morning. The first person to come through the front door isn't even a customer. It's Graves. Fancy meeting you here, Finley says. You want some coffee? The usual? Graves is like, whoa. <laughs> He's like not paying attention. Not right now, thank you. Pay me no mind. I'll be in and out today. Maintenance work. Ooh, get your hard hat. Reese says, finally, the sink in the kitchen has been backing up something fierce lately. <laughs> Graves says, not that kind of maintenance, my friend. Security improvements. Aw, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, we're getting a barbed wire fence. No one is allowed in or out. He blows through the building and disappears through the back door as quickly as he arrived. Reese watches him go and takes a few wavering steps towards the door before deciding against it. I guess even Reese can't outboss the boss. <laughs> He's such a suck up. Security improvements, huh? What the heck is that supposed to mean? Finley says that was weird. Well, back to work, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to focus on work when I can see Graves pacing back and forth in front of the big glass storefront. Luckily, it's a slow day, so I can excuse myself every so often to peek in on him. I think I just saw him bury something under a loose tile. <laughs> Evidence. <laughs> At one point, I dip my head out to see what he's doing, and he's just standing there, staring at the wall, tracing a picture on it with his finger. This is all very witchcrafty. It sounds like he's up to something. I'm sure he's just doing it to look busy, but then I catch a glimpse of something, like light reflecting off a piece of metal on the wall itself. It flashes for a moment, and then it's gone. Come on, Avery. Like, we've rediscovered that magic exists. Like, put two and two together here. Maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe he's doing something to the building. Something arcane, I guess. But even if he is, why? Why is he suddenly so concerned with security? Is he setting, like, a magic anti-theft alarm or something? Or is it something more sinister? It's probably the spell that forces you to be a cat. I can't help but think of his weird behavior this morning and his focus on the rust piles. Something must be coming. Something as serious as the cat curse. Probably more serious. Perhaps something actually actively harmful would be my guess. If he's just going to leave us in the dark, I gotta do something. It's time I finally talk to someone about magic. The book, the curse, everything. 
Uh, oh no! It set us on Mason's path. That's a new one. Um. Okay, what I'll do is I'll save here. <laughs> um, that's the first. And then what we'll do is I'll just I'll just play up again from the old, um, old saves that I have until we get to um, Landry's. Again, I do prefer Mason, but Landry's has more. It makes more sense for the narrative of the story, so hang tight, we'll be back. Okay, so we went back a little bit. Um, instead of going to the basement, which is where we talked to Mason, we're going to check out Grace's apartment. This is the only scene that's different up until the, the part where we um, said we were going to go talk to Mason in the kitchen about our magic. So um, we'll, we'll watch this part, and then when we come back, will be where we were. So we say, you know, I've always got the chance to go into that creepy basement. I should take the opportunity while Graves is gone to root around his apartment a bit. I tiptoe past Finley on the second floor. Sure, she's going to say something to me about where I'm going, but she doesn't look up from the computer. It's spooky. I think my main issue is the lace around the curtains. It's a big yikes from me. We say, wow, it's immaculate. I do like the rug, though. This makes me feel embarrassed about the state of my apartment right now, but whatever. He's probably showing off because he knows people come up here a lot. It's well designed, too. I can make fun of the guy all I want, but I have to admit he has a sense of style, interior decorating-wise, at least. Heck, that cat castle looks downright regal. I wonder if Landry built that one? I don't see any cats in the apartment, but it would make sense that he'd have a setup for them, right? There's probably one in here somewhere. Ah, there we go. I see a single suspicious blue eye peeking at me from inside the castle. Is that Graves? A black cat peeks out. It is. It's not. It's not. <laughs> oh, hey, hey there. The cloudy eye belongs to a dark mass of black fur that refuses to move, even though its gaze follows me everywhere I turn. Hey, buddy, it's okay. A sleek tail thumps an annoyance against the carpeted castle wall. Graves immediately. He didn't even leave. He just turned right around. I see you've met the great Countess Dracula. Shoot. I've been caught. Be cool, Avery. Play it cool. You named your cat Countess Dracula? Just Dracula, but she's a venerable lady now, so she deserves our respect. She's nearly 19, so I hope you've been taking care with her. Graves leans forward and pats his hands on his legs. Slowly, Dracula pulls herself from the cat castle and hops down. We say she looks good for her age. Graves says she's a tad shy with new people, but she's great. We've been through a lot together. Graves sits on the couch and holds his hands in front of him with an almost unexpected gentleness. Come here, you sweet old lady. Dracula saunters a little bow-legged walk up to him and headbutts his palm. She meows. He says, hello, darling. I can hear her purring from here. I'm taken aback at how cute they are together. Everyone looks better with pets. <laughs> I don't think you'll find what you're looking for in here, but you're welcome to stay for a while regardless. I feel terrible that we haven't been able to chat since you started, he says. I wasn't looking for anything. You're a terrible liar. <laughs> All right, so maybe I was kind of curious, we say. He says, aha, well, I'm here now, so if you have any questions... How do you ask someone if they're a witch anyway? Hey, are you a witch? Seems a bit... I don't know about that. We say, I know there's something weird about this cafe. <laughs> you think? Graves says, well, I'd be insulted if you said anything less about a cafe that I designed. I prefer weird. We say, what do you know about this curse business? His eyes flicker for a moment, cold and fiery, before he turns them back towards Dracula. We are all cursed in our own ways, Avery. Okay, but this is a literal fucking curse. Not a metaphor curse like IBS or something. This is a literal, you cursed me to be a physical, literal cat. I fucking hate you. There are some instances where you must be your own savior. Well, if you won't help me, we say. You're a strong one, he says. I like that. Hell or high water, I'm going to stick it to Graves and get this dumb curse lifted for everybody. How about that? Graves says, well, I'd best be headed back out. I need to make a few rounds before I pick up dinner. You'll join us, won't you? We say, like I'm going to pass up a free dinner. 
Gray says, of course. He stands up from the couch and lightly ruffles my hair as he passes me. We're out of time. So catch you next time. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.